In this video, we're going to be using DeMoff's theorem to find the complex third roots of z to the power of 3 equals negative 1 plus j. So what exactly does this mean? And just because we have a complex in front of it does not mean that we're changing the definition of what the roots are. The third root is just saying what complex number can be multiplied by itself three times such that we get negative 1 plus j. That's all this is asking. And we can use DeMoff's theorem to make this relatively easy for us. So the first thing that we're going to do is convert this into polar form. And I personally like to visualize it as well. So first, I'm going to visualize this. Real axes. We've got our imaginary axes. Okay, negative 1 in the real and positive 1 in the j that's negative 1 that is positive 1 and our complex number looks something like this this is well this is z cubed keep this in mind okay notice how uh, the units in the real and imaginary are equal this is an indicator that it's going to be the special triangle with pi over 4 Okay, so using this special triangle, pi over 4, this is 1, this is 1, this is square root of 2. Great, so we can immediately jump to the modulus is, actually let's just write this as, we'll write this as r is equal to root 2, and theta here, r equals 2, or root 2. And theta, we go from the positive direction of the real axis to the imaginary number, or to the complex number. And theta is, in this case, it's pi minus pi over 4, or pi over 2 plus pi over 4. So this will be. 3 pi over 4. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to write out the formula for the roots. Often you'll see the roots as a W. Not entirely sure why, but it just is. So we've got W sub K is equal to, and this is going to be the modulus times 1 over n, or to the power of 1 over n, multiplied by cosine of, this is going to be theta plus 2 pi times k over n, plus j times sine of the same argument. Our argument wouldn't change. If that's confusing, go watch the video on what exactly is polar form. Okay. Great. This is the formula that we'll be using. And in this case, k starts at 0. And we've got 1. We've got 2. Because there's three roots. So we need three different values of k. And we know n is equal to 3. Right? I've got a video on my channel of where exactly this equation comes from. It's not extremely important, I would say. But it definitely helps your understanding. Um, and it basically comes from the fact that um, cosine, when we're multiplying complex numbers together, um, you're going to be adding the angles. And for the modulus, it's just multiplying all the moduluses together. So if we were reversing that and finding the roots, so that because we're, we're trying to find what number multiplied by itself n times will get us z to the n. For the modulus, we just need to take it to the exponent of 1 divided by n. That's more straightforward. The argument is essentially we're doing we're dividing instead of uh, we're dividing by n because usually we'll multiply it by n. The 2 pi k basically comes from the solutions from cosine and sine, and that I go into more detail in another video. I'll link that in this description. But for now, let's just see how we'll apply this. 
So we have all the information actually, theta, k, n, um, and r. And all we need to do is apply it three times. That's basically it. So we'll start with k equals zero. So the first root is, well, what is r? r is root two. This is to the power of one over n, which is one third. Cosine of our pi, this is going to, or theta is three pi over four, plus two pi times zero. That's just zero, divided by n, which is three, plus j sine of the same thing. That's three pi over four plus zero over three. Beautiful. Let's simplify this. This is going to be two to the one over six times cosine of the threes will cancel out. I get pi over four plus j times sine of pi over four. So this is, we've got the sixth root of two. And then we know cosine of pi over four is going to be, um, let's tr look back at our special triangle. Remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's one over root two. And this is in the, uh, the first quadrant, so that's positive cosine. So one over root two plus j, and sine is also positive, so this is one over root two. Okay, and Oh, sorry about this. Scroll down. This is going to be, well, if we multiply this in, we will get, uh, well, one of our root twos will, actually, this is a two to the one over six divided by two to the half. So I think we subtract the exponents here. Ew. Honestly, you could probably simplify this, not really important, but for better communication, probably expand this out. It's not gonna look ugly because I just, or it's not gonna look super neat because I just made this example up. But final answer, distribute your uh, uh, modulus into the, into the brackets and just express it that way. So next we have k is equal to one. So w1. This will start by r, which is root two, to the power of one third, times cosine of theta does not change, three pi over four plus, but now we have plus two pi times one. This is divided by three, plus j times sine of, again, the argument doesn't change. So this will be the same. Okay. Root two to the one third. All right, so doing this math, we get three pi over four plus, we can think of that as eight pi over four. That's going to be 11 pi over four because three plus eight is 11. So that's 11 pi over four and four times three is 12. So ooh, cosine of that. So this will be cosine of 11 pi over 12 plus j times sine of, and this is again, 11 pi over 12. Let's make sure we did that correctly. Three pi over four plus eight pi over four, eight and three is 11 pi over four, divide by three. Oh, that seems right to me. Okay. In this case, 11 pi over 12, because I made this example up, this is not from a special triangle. We don't have a special triangle with uh, pi over 12 as a pi primary angle. Um, so in this case, you have to use a calculator to evaluate this properly. If we want to leave this in exact form, we have to leave it at this. So let's just leave it at this for now. But know that if you prob if you were probably asked 
a question like this in a course where you're not allowed a calculator, you would be able to evaluate these things in the question. If you're not for some reason, just leave it in exact form. Okay, lastly, k equals 2. Again, we're just applying the formula. w2 is equal to root 2 modulus to the 1 over n times cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi times 2 all over 3. Same thing here. I'm going to write this out as, well, 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi. So 4 pi is with a denominator of 4 is 16 over 4 pi. That's 4 pi. Great. So now just, just doing the algebra here, nothing crazy. We'll get cosine of... So this is going to be, excuse me, 19 pi over 12. That's because 16 plus 3 is 19. And then the denominator can be 4 times 3. 19 pi over 12 plus j sine of 19 pi over 12. And we're not fully done here. So when you have something like this uh, where the argument is outside of between like 0 and 2 pi um, or like negative pi to pi or something um, you want to basically subtract uh, oh actually wait hold on no sorry my mistake ignore what I was just saying um, 19 pi over 12 that's gonna be in the uh, I believe the third quadrant uh, actually pi over 2 I, I can't do these fractions in my head but it's gonna be in the bottom half it's, it doesn't surpass uh, 24 pi over 12 which is 2 pi so anyways so th th this would be okay and again same thing goes with the calculator this is not something that you could do with a special triangle but last thing before because I mean we have these these are the answers right here let me highlight them these are the roots if you were to multiply these numbers together you would get negative 1 plus j so what I want to try to show here which I hope I can do well is show that um, if I were to graph these let's let's do w naught okay um, that is pi over 4 an angle of pi over 4 so that's gonna start right there okay and next we've got 11 pi over 12 so 11 pi over 12 is just a sliver before we get to 12 pi over 12 which is pi so that's gonna be just barely over here so this is w naught this is w1 and then lastly we've got 19 pi over 12 and that's going to be just over here something like this the reason that I can tell this is because actually you'll find that the complex roots should be equally like completely equally distributed um, in terms of the angle that separates them so this angle here let's call this Phi this angle and this angle and this angle these are all gonna be the same right so since we have three roots we've got three different uh, three different angles here great I hope that makes sense and I hope that um, you're able to apply this now great thanks for watching